A few hours ago, a tall volcano in the Philippines entered into an explosive eruption, launching an ash plume to 9,200 feet, 2,800 meters, altitude. At this moment, scientists from Five Volks are analyzing real-time data, and I will explain exactly what is happening and why this is so significant. Taal Volcano, located 40 miles, 65 kilometers, south of Manila in the Philippines, awakened dramatically on Wednesday morning. Between 6.51 and 6.54 in the morning, a minor Frida magmatic eruption shook the main crater of Volcano Island, sending a grayish ash plume to an impressive altitude of 9,200 feet, 2,800 meters, above the crater rim. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, known as Five Vols, confirmed the event through its seismic monitoring networks and surveillance cameras installed around the volcano. The volcanic plume, driven by prevailing winds, drifted northeast, initially moving away from the most densely populated areas, but still representing a significant concern for communities living in the path of the suspended ash. The eruption lasted exactly three minutes, a relatively short period that classified the event as minor on the volcanological scale, but which does not diminish the seriousness of the situation. During those brief but intense 180 seconds, the violent encounter between ascending magma and water from the underground hydrothermal system generated an explosion that fragmented rocks, instantly vaporized water, and ejected volcanic material at high velocity. Thermal and high-resolution video cameras captured every moment of the event, showing the rapid development of the eruptive column that rose dramatically against the Philippine dawn sky. Seismic sensors detected the characteristic tremors that accompanied the explosion, while infrasound instruments captured the acoustic pressure waves generated by the explosive fragmentation of magma and surrounding rock. What makes this eruption particularly significant is not just its isolated occurrence, but the broader context of increasing volcanic activity at Tal during recent weeks. October 2025 witnessed a remarkable sequence of eruptive events with four eruptions recorded between October 25th and 26th, generating plumes that reached altitudes between 3,900 feet and 6,900 feet, 1,200 and 2,100 meters. This recurring activity suggests that the volcano's magmatic hydrothermal system remains in a state of persistent unrest, where small perturbations in the delicate balance between pressure, temperature, and water availability can trigger sudden explosions. Wednesday's eruption, with its plume even higher than many of October's explosions, demonstrates that Tall maintains considerable energy stored in its underground system. Despite the visual drama of the eruption, Fivolk's director Teresito Bacolcol offered a reassuring but cautious perspective to the Filipino population in an interview with radio station DZMM. According to his words, the event was classified as minor precisely because it was short-lived. And this does not mean that a strong explosion will immediately follow. This statement is crucial to avoid unnecessary panic, but also carries an implicit message. Although a larger eruption is not imminent, the possibility always remains present when dealing with Tal. The director emphasized that Alert Level 1 remains in effect, indicating low-level unrest. But this should not be interpreted as meaning the volcano has ceased its activity, or that the threat has completely disappeared. The Frito magmatic nature of this eruption deserves special attention. Unlike purely phreatic eruptions, which involve only steam and heated water, Frito magmatic eruptions occur when fresh magma comes into direct contact with water, whether from the crater lake, underground aquifers, or water infiltrated through fractures in the porous rocks that compose the volcanic structure. This encounter between opposing elements, fire and water, instantly releases tremendous energy far superior to what would be produced by gradual cooling of magma. The resulting explosive fragmentation produces fine ash, ballistic projectiles, and in more intense cases, pyroclastic density currents that can flow at speeds exceeding 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers per hour. The grayish color of the plume observed on Wednesday morning indicates the significant presence of fragmented rock material mixed with steam, confirming the phreatomagmatic nature of the event. To fully understand the significance of this eruption, it is essential to delve into the unique mechanics that make Tal one of the most complex and unpredictable volcanoes on the planet. The unique geological configuration of this volcanic system creates perfect conditions for explosive freedom magmatic eruptions. The volcano consists of a three mile wide, five kilometers island, situated in the center of Tal Lake, 
which in turn occupies a 9 by 12 mile, 15 by 20 kilometers, caldera formed by colossal eruptions from the geological past. This caldera filled with water to form a lake of 103 square miles, 267 square kilometers, with a maximum depth of 525 feet, 160 meters, provides a virtually inexhaustible source of water that can interact explosively with ascending magma. The main crater of Volcano Island contains its own crater lake, effectively creating a lake within a lake within a caldera, a triple configuration that dramatically intensifies the potential for explosive interactions between magma and water. When magma ascends through underground conduits beneath Volcano Island, it can encounter water at multiple levels, in saturated porous rocks below the water table, in the crater lake itself, or in pockets of water trapped in fractures and cavities. Each of these potential contact zones represents a point where Frito magmatic explosions can be triggered. Wednesday's eruption, with its 9,200 foot, 2,800 meter plume, suggests that magma encountered a substantial amount of water, possibly in a shallow aquifer beneath the crater floor or through infiltration into the crater lake. Monitoring data prior to the eruption reveals intriguing aspects about the behavior of the volcanic system. Moving to more recent times, the January 2020 eruption marked the most dramatic awakening of Tall in more than four decades. On January 12th, a violent Frito magmatic explosion sent an eruptive column to 9 miles 15 kilometers altitude, penetrating the stratosphere and creating a spectacle visible from Manila. Volcanic lightning, electrical discharges, generated by friction between ash particles and the eruptive column, dramatically illuminated the eruption cloud, creating images that circulated globally and captured the world's imagination. The event forced the evacuation of more than 400,000 people from surrounding areas, closed Manila's Ninoy Aquino International Airport for several days due to the danger volcanic ash posed to aircraft engines, and resulted in economic losses estimated in the hundreds of millions of dollars. The sequence of minor eruptions that Tall has been producing since 2021 represents a pattern of behavior that volcanologists characterize as low-level unrest with intermittent eruptive episodes. Minor phreatic and phreatomagmatic explosions occurred in July and November 2021, January through March 2022, April and October 2022, and continued sporadically through 2023, 2024, and now 2025. This episodic activity demonstrates that Tall's magmatic hydrothermal system remains energized and capable of producing sudden explosions, even without progressing to a full magmatic eruption involving lava effusion or sustained large-scale explosions. The context of the October 2025 eruptions adds an important layer of concern to Wednesday's event. The sequence of four eruptions between October 25th and 26th represented one of the volcano's most active periods since the January 2020 event. The first eruption occurred at 5.31 in the afternoon on the 25th, followed by a Friedrich explosion at 2.55 in the morning on the 26th, and then two powerful Frito magmatic eruptions at 8.13 and 8.20. These last two were particularly intense, generating plumes up to 6,900 feet, 2,100 meters, and producing small pyroclastic density currents that flow down the inner crater walls. Wednesday's eruption, occurring approximately two weeks after this October sequence, suggests that the volcano has not completely returned to a state of repose, but continues in a mode of elevated activity where minor explosions can occur with little or no prior warning. If you're fascinated by these hidden forces of nature that shape our planet in such dramatic ways and wish to continue learning about active volcanoes, powerful earthquakes, and other extraordinary geological phenomena occurring around the world, subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to not miss upcoming content. Our goal is to bring precise scientific information about significant geological events, helping you better understand the natural forces that continuously reshape Earth's surface. Share this video with friends and family interested in volcanology and earth sciences, and leave in the comments your questions about tall or other active volcanoes you would like us to cover in future videos.